.NET has been around for more than 20 years, but with so many different versions and framework names including .NET Framework, .NET Core and now just .NET, it can get very confusing. It's easy to get lost in history. In this video, I'll take you through the evolution of .NET from its humble beginnings in the early 2000s to the present day. You'll gain a deeper understanding of the .NET landscape and you'll learn about one of the biggest misconceptions in the world of .NET, the .NET standard. Whether you're a beginner or a more experienced .NET developer, I promise at the end of this video you will understand a lot more about the past, the current and the future of the .NET platform. I'm a software engineer with more than a decade of experience on the .NET platform. On this channel, you'll learn all about .NET development. From a high-level overview, everything started with the .NET framework in 2002. .NET Core followed in 2016 and was finally turned into .NET, beginning with version 5 in 2020. However, we need to dive deeper to fully understand how it all came along, why it changed the name twice and what exactly .NET Core differentiates from the .NET Framework. Let's relive the .NET journey chronologically by traveling back in time and starting at the very beginning. The first version of the .NET Framework was released on February 12, 2002. It has been a Windows-only platform since the whole lifetime of the .NET Framework name, starting from 2002 and going all the way to the present. To give you some perspective and nostalgic feeling, if you're the same age or older than me, the .NET Framework 1.0 was released for Windows 98, Windows ME Millennium Edition, MT4 and the beloved Windows XP. The .NET Framework 1.0 introduced the .NET CLR, the .NET Base Class Libraries, ASP.NET and most importantly, the first version of Visual Studio .NET. The .NET Framework 2.0 was released at the same time as Visual Studio 2005 on January 22, 2006. The most notable new c -sharp features included partial classes, nullable types, anonymous methods and data tables. However, the biggest addition to .NET was the introduction of Windows Forms or short WinForms. .NET Framework 3.0 was released on November 6, 2006. It introduced Windows Presentation Foundation WPF, Windows Communication Foundation WCF and Windows Workflow Foundation WF. The .NET Framework 3.5 was released on November 19, 2007 and brought meaningful improvements and new features for existing technologies such as WPF and WCF. And most notably, the new release of Visual Studio 2008, Extension Methods, Link and Entity Framework. The .NET Framework 4.0 was released on April 12, 2010. It was a massively improved and enhanced version. It also came with the Visual Studio 2010 release. The most notable new technologies introduced were Parallel Link, Task Parallel Library TPL and the introduction of the BigInt data type. The .NET Framework 4.5 was released on August 15, 2012 together with Visual Studio 2012. It brought built-in support for async await to handle asynchronous operations. On the technology side, the universal Windows platform apps UWP was introduced. It allowed targeting multiple devices with a single code base. The .NET Framework 4.6 was released on July 20th, 2015 together with Visual Studio 2015. It added the just-in-time JIT compiler called RioJIT as well as the first open source .NET Framework packages. Besides Visual Studio 2015, the most notable addition was HTTP2 support. The .NET Framework 4.7 was released on April 15, 2017 together with Visual Studio 2017. It included a few new features such as object cache extensibility or improved transport layer security TLS, but nothing groundbreaking. 
The .NET Framework 4.8 was released on April 18th, 2019 and was the last release of the .NET Framework era. It included the release of Visual Studio 2019. It included improvements for the JIT compiler and added anti-malware scanning to all assemblies. The .NET Framework 4.8.1 was released on August 9th, 2022 and was the last patch version while recording this video. The .NET Framework was a success story. More and more developers adopted the .NET platform over time and started implementing applications based on it. However, the .NET Framework is tightly coupled to Windows. Not only is it coupled to the release cycle of Windows, also the applications developed based on the .NET Framework only run on Windows. With modern software development, we expect short and incremental release cycles and most frameworks are open source. Open sourcing the .NET framework has never been an option because it's tightly coupled to Windows and there are licensing issues involved in it. Also, the other issue being tightly coupled to Windows and limited to Windows became a bigger issue over time. This is where .NET Core comes into play. It was designed to be the next evolution of the .NET platform. It's a free and open source cross-platform library for .NET development. It's independent of Windows and developers can use macOS, Linux and Windows to develop applications on the .NET Core platform. Those attributes also make .NET a viable option for cloud-native development. .NET Core 1.0 was announced in 2014 and released on June 27, 2016 and brought us C Sharp 6. This places the initial release of .NET Core after the .NET Framework 4.6 version but before .NET Framework 4.7. It had a limited number of re-implemented APIs and was a proof of concept and the foundation of the .NET we use today. It demonstrated cross-platform support and a lightweight, modular, runtime optimized for cloud and container scenarios. ASP.NET Core, a web application development framework, was the first new technology built on top of .NET Core and released with .NET Core 1.0. .NET Core 2.0 was released a year later on August 14, 2017, a few months after the .NET Framework 4.7 and Visual Studio 2017 releases. It also brought us C Sharp 7. The major features were ARM support for IoT scenarios, improved performance and scalability, including support for the span of T and memory of T types. .NET Core 3.0 was released two years later, on September 23rd, 2019, a few months after the final .NET Framework version 4.8. It also brought C Sharp 8. It added support for Windows Desktop Application Development with Windows Presentation Foundation, WPF and WinForms and HTTP2. .NET Core 3.1, which was a long-term support release that was highly adopted in the community, was released on December 3rd, 2019. The previous .NET Core versions were mainly for people experimenting with the new implementation of the platform. Starting with .NET Core 3.1, there was a massive shift towards developing applications on the new .NET Core instead of the old .NET framework. It also was the first version I used for a .NET Core application in production. .NET 5 was released on November 10th, 2020. The jump from version 3 to 5 was done to prevent mixing up the version numbers between the .NET Framework and .NET Core. .NET 5 also brought C Sharp 9. It was also the version where .NET Core was renamed to just .NET as we know it today. Also, Blazor Server was released with .NET 5. Since version 5, we get a new .NET and C Sharp version every year. The even numbers are long-term support releases with 3 years of support and the odd numbers are short-term support releases with 18 months of support. .NET 6 was released on November 8, 2021. 
It was the first long-term support release after the renaming to .NET. It also came with C Sharp 10. On the same day, Visual Studio 2022 was released. It includes support for HUD Reload, one of the technologies that massively speeds up the development cycle when developing .NET applications. Minimal APIs for ASP.NET Core development, top-level statements, as well as file-scoped namespaces were introduced to mention a few relevant changes. .NET 7 was released on November 8, 2022 as the current short-term support release and came with C Sharp 11. The required keyword is something I often use when building ASP.NET Core backends and native ahead of time compilation produces standalone executables. In the foreseeable future, we will get a .NET and C Sharp release every single year. In November 2023, we expect .NET 8 and C Sharp 12. Starting with .NET 5 in 2022, there was no reason to develop new applications based on the old .NET framework anymore. Today, I cannot think of a scenario where the old .NET framework would be a better choice for a new application than one of the current .NET versions. New .NET applications should target one of the supported versions, which at the time of this recording are .NET 6 or 7. So, we finally have a clear picture of the .NET framework, all its versions, how .NET Core came into play, great, but what about the .NET standard? How does the .NET standard fit into this big picture? Let's clear up one of the biggest misconceptions first. Somehow the idea of .NET standard being a next generation framework has spread around the web. It's completely wrong. The .NET standard is a formal specification that different platforms such as the .NET Framework or .NET Core implement. It describes the API surface the frameworks have to implement in order to be compatible with the .NET standard. The idea behind the .NET standard was to allow code sharing between different projects targeting different frameworks such as the .NET Framework, .NET Core, Mono, Xamarin or Universal Windows Applications UWP. There are different versions of the .NET standard with version 2.1 being the latest and final release of the specification. The higher the version number, the more APIs are supported. On the other hand, higher .NET standards require newer versions of the implementations. If you still need to share code between older .NET versions, .NET standard might still be a viable option today. If you target the .NET standard today, I suggest targeting the version 2.0 of the standard because it's implemented in the .NET Core 2.0 version as well as the .NET Framework 4.6 release. However, .NET Standard isn't relevant for modern .NET development anymore. Beginning with .NET 5 and its unification of the platform, we don't need .NET Standard anymore. A class library targeting .NET 5 or higher can share code between all modern .NET application types. Versioning is hard and usually less fun than playing with the latest framework and writing code. However, with more than 20 years of history, .NET is still around and will be relevant in the future. Therefore, understanding the past, the present and the future makes a lot of sense. There has been a difficult time with the introduction of .NET Core and .NET Standard in 2016, but since .NET 5, I think .NET development has never been simpler and it allows me to be very productive building applications every single day. As said before, the future will bring us a new C Sharp and .NET version every single year. If you still have questions about .NET versioning, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, press the like button and if you want to learn more about .NET development, subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.